Well, thank you for joining me for another ITY video. Today, I have Rory Dooley. He is the Senior Vice President of Ultimate Ears. It's an audio company. We're going to hear all about it. Rory, welcome to Alex, the video. Thanks for having me today. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Now, please tell us a little bit about Ultimate Ears, when they started, the Logitech connection, and, and the, uh, the number of products that Ultimate Ears has released. Yeah, absolutely. So Ultimate Ears started as a company back in 1995. Yeah, wow. It started on the back of a tour bus. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Alex Van Halen and his sound engineer. Right. And the problem they were trying to solve is to uh, uh, help musicians perform better on stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in the day, the way musicians would perform on stage and the way they get feedback is they'd have big stage monitors in front of them, speakers basically, providing the feedback to the sound they were playing. Mm -hmm. And they'd use that feedback to uh, keep in rhythm, to, uh, to stay in tune, and to uh, be with the rest of the band. The challenge with that is um, there would be lots of these monitors uh, on the stage. It would force the musician to be in a fixed location on the stage. Don't move from this location, yeah. otherwise you lose the feedback. And uh, you'd also get a lot of um, noise coming in from the other monitors that were providing feedback as well. So what they did is they took that technology of the stage monitor, shrunk it down mm -hmm. into an earphone, a custom fitted earphone designed specifically for the musician's ear, and uh, made custom fitted earphones to provide exactly that same feedback, but as a consequence freed the musician up from a fixed location on the stage and enabled them to get the exact feedback and type of feedback they wanted, and thirdly actually protect their ears. One of the biggest assets a musician has is their ears, and yeah. so having ears that can hear effectively and well was really important as well. So that was the uh, the origins of the company. So really uh, originated in the music industry, mm -hmm. uh, providing a real solution. And as we like to say, transforming how musicians performed on stage. Yeah, so a real heritage there. A real heritage. And, and as you know, from 95 to today, what, one of the things we can say has definitely shifted is back in the day in 1995, you know, the last millennium, a long time ago now. Yeah, Walkmans um, were still around. Well, yeah, that's right. And, <laughs> and uh, music and musicians, most of their money was made from recordings. Yeah. And as we fast forward to 2015, most of the money in the music industry today is in performance. performance so yeah. performance is becoming a much more important thing. Touring and uh, making money from recordings is uh, becoming more and more difficult, as, as you know. So that's where uh, Ultimate Ears came from, strong heritage in the music industry. In 2008, uh, Logitech bought the company. And um, uh, Logitech bought the company because Logitech has been in the audio business itself for a long, for a long time. time. Yeah. Uh, especially around the computer space, yeah. but wanted a more authentic music brand. Well, a premium brand. You know, yeah, really, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, premium brand and, and going beyond the, the computer as well. Yeah. And uh, now, in all I'm saying. Not to say Logitech's not a premium brand, yeah. I mean, an even more premium brand. And even more premium. <laughs> and more, more specifically, a, an audio, a specific audio brand. Yeah, yeah. Independent of premiumness or otherwise, we're really a specific yeah. audio brand. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in, in that time, we still have the, uh, the custom business down in Southern California in Irvine, where it started. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ultimate Ears still provides the in-ear monitors to around 70% of the world's touring musicians today. But we've taken um, the Ultimate Ears brand and we've developed a line of consumer products over the last um, couple of years. Yeah. And we have three consumer products in market today, including uh, the new product that we're talking about today. And uh, we'll have a, a limited lineup um, of... Uh, really exceptional products is what we intend with the Ultimate Ears brand. Right. Which makes sense, you know, keep a keep people happy with a focused range. Yeah, that, a, um, a few great things, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, yeah. So please show us the latest uh, UE Mega Boom. And, yeah, um, yeah, and so in, in showing the UE Mega Boom, and I'll, I'll show the, the UE Boom at the same time, and mm -hmm. so one of the things I want to say and, you know, convey to uh, your uh, viewers and uh, your audience is you know, when we designed the UE Boom, we designed it with a very specific point of view. Mm -hmm. and the specific point of view is the music is changing, uh, the way people consume music is changing, and mm -hmm. we come from an era where we had physical devices to play the music. We had cassette decks, we had turntables, some of us. We had uh, CD players and uh, amplifiers, and we also had a physical music collection, which could be cassettes, CDs. Uh, and the real gigs had reel to reels. Didn't yeah, they? yeah, reel to reels as well in, in, in the day, exactly. <laughs> the yeah. wire recorders, yeah. uh, but they were long, it's a long time ago. Yeah, so what, what's changed? Actually, the, these look like wax cylinders, you know? Yeah, they could be, you could take yeah, you, you could, could take them that level. But, so, uh, and the speakers were always the, uh, the speakers were always the peripheral devices to this music ecosystem. Yeah. And in the last uh, several years, things have gone more into the cloud, uh, streaming services exist. Yeah. Uh, so your physical collection has disappeared. Mm -hmm. The physical devices to play back the music have mostly disappeared as well. 
one of the last physical things left in the ecosystem will be the speaker. Mm. We wanted a speaker that would be proud to be in the center of the room, yeah. which the boom is. We wanted a speaker that would live out in the world and would uh, would take the rough and tumble, the knocks in life. So you can do this to you we boom. You're not going to yeah. see that on camera, but I just yeah. dropped it on the ground. Yeah, well, you can it hear back. it. Yep. And uh, you know, the key point was something sits in the middle, proud to be in the middle, designed with this idea of 360 degree sound. So the sound mm -hmm. emanates evenly all, in all directions. And that was a key part of the design philosophy of uh, UE Boom. And it sounds like you wanted a bigger boom. And so, yeah, so we, we, um, we really, you know, so what this design did is it um, not just achieved great commercial success for us, mm -hmm. so it's done really, really well in market. It's also won three of the most prestigious design awards you can win, the Red Dot Award, the IF Award, and the ITSA Award. Mm -hmm. So we really have a great design that's been recognized critically and commercially, the Triple Crown of Design Awards. We wanted to amplify that with the new product, the UE Mega Boom. Yeah. Which we've done, so it's it's uh, it's taken what we have with Boom, and it's pushed a number of things to the next level. Not just the sound; the sound is amazing on the UE Mega is Boom. It, is gonna... it twice the sound? Is it? It's it's yeah, twice the sound, but in a in and and how you define sound. So, because there's more, you know, one of the challenges with sound is it's the physics of moving air. So that's one of the key things about sound. Mm -hmm. The more air you can move, uh, the better job you can do at rendering the low range frequencies specifically. So more of the low end, more bass, um, louder sound as well, um, mm -hmm. but extremely well balanced across all the frequency range as well, which we were able to do with UE Boom also. Yeah. Uh, then a few areas where we pushed the limits as well in terms of uh, what we have that's different to UE Boom. Uh, so one of the things is we were able to make this completely waterproof as right. opposed to water resistant. Yeah. So it's IPX7 rated, which means 30 minutes at one meter depth and uh, no damage to the product. Mm -hmm. Does it float? It doesn't float, it floats kind of halfway up, but not uh, not to an extent that it's... Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, obviously yeah, got yeah. stuff inside. So. Yeah, it's got stuff inside, exactly, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so completely waterproof. But still, yeah, you can splash yeah. it around the pool, you can, not yeah, you can, uh, one of the things, you know, one of the things we did with, with Boom as well as Mega Boom, we, uh, we created an alarm feature, one of the only Bluetooth speakers to have a musical alarm, so mm -hmm. you, can, you can wake up to music, you can set the alarm, you can say, I want to wake up at 6 a.m., to this song or that song, whichever song you happen to pick, and then you can take that music and go to the shower because it's waterproof. Yeah, yeah. it's a really good Very thing. Cool. We don't necessarily like waking people up, but we do yeah. encourage people to uh, wake up in a good humor with some great music and uh, and take it to the shower with them. So that was important to us as well. From uh, that point of view, waterproof. We also increased the wireless range, so it's mm -hmm. now 30 meters instead of 15, 15 with yeah. boom, yeah. Uh, which again people want more of. Yeah. And we integrated Bluetooth low energy technology, so it uh, allows you to remotely control the device from your smartphone, switch it on and off. Yeah. You can set the alarm without the device needing to be on. You see can check the battery. out. You can see the battery life exactly. And, uh, and so also up wireless updates. And, yeah. And so then, then that's one of the key things and uh, one of the most important things is uh, we have wireless updates as well. So. Previously, to update your UE Boom, you used to have to take it, plug it into your PC, USB, USB download a file, side load it to the Boom, and then your speaker would be updated. With the yeah. UE Mega Boom, you'll now get a notification in your app, say, hey, there's an update available. You'll click it, it will then push the update wirelessly to the speaker. Which is what you expect in 2015. That's it's great. what you expect in 2015, exactly. Now, all like I've said, the good news is, uh, you know, I'll switch this on and we'll, we'll do something here and hopefully uh, show something through the app as well. So yeah, we. we we have uh, the app you can see here. Mm -hmm. and, showing uh, us the, the blue boom there. Showing us the blue boom, exactly. So we'll, we'll, um, we'll play a piece of music, which we'll find here. Sure. And we'll let you worry about the... Yeah, so nice piece of Dave Brubeck here playing. Now what I'm going to do as well, one of the things, um, we're going to do this multi-handed. Yeah. One of the nice things we're doing as well is we launch um, the UE I'm going to just turn it down a little yeah. bit so I can speak. As we launch the uh, UE Mega Boom, we're also providing an update which will uh, push out next week for the UE Boom customers. Mm -hmm. And with that update, if all goes to plan, I have to just juggle my hands here. Sure. We're going to, we're going to, the update to UE Boom will do three things. Mm -hmm. It will enable uh, Boom to Mega Boom pairing, as there you can see go. here. Yep. So we have Boom and Mega Boom paired here together. Mm -hmm. It will also enable remote on-off for UE Boom. So UE Boom, any customers bought UE Boom since we launched in May 2013, 
will be able to update to UE Boom to have uh, the same feature of remote on off that you get with UE Mega Boom. And, and remote updating. And, and then finally, yeah, the wireless updating will also be uh, an included feature. So the last time you'll have to update your UE Boom over the PC, basically. So this is now in uh, stereo mode or double mode? This is now in double mode, and I can switch from uh, double mode to stereo mode, and we'll, uh, we'll go back in and choose a song that will work. Much. So let's go back into. So now, we're going to move this over here out yep. of camera shot a little bit, maybe? Oh, no, or in camera, camera shot? shot there, yeah. I'm going to pick this one up. Yeah, you have to move this one a bit closer yep. to you. Well, we have a, a demo effect problem here, so. Sure, but otherwise, it, yeah. Yeah. stereo mode or double mode? Yeah, so, stereo mode or double mode, so it's up to you to, uh, to choose which one you want to choose. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we'll probably pause it for the time being. Yeah. Yep. But uh, then, uh, well, my next question is, uh, which do you prefer, doubling the sound or stereo sound? <laughs> when you, uh, you when know, you it really, it's, it's really horses for court. You know, I think yeah. if, we're, if you're uh, if you're in a space, you want to have more music in the space. Double it. Uh, double it is yeah. clearly a great thing. If you're kind of on your own and you want to uh, kick back and and uh, enjoy some wide separation of the sound, then uh, stereo mode is a great mode to be in as well. Well, and it's nice to be able to have that capability. I mean, yeah. it's, I've seen it on some other speakers, but it's still relatively new for most. Yeah, absolutely. Most, yeah, yeah. It's still category, a, it's so. still a new feature, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, everybody seems to be offering Bluetooth speakers today. They're just there's a glut of them. Um, what's your comment on that, especially the really cheap ones? I mean, is it simply a case of you get what you pay for, or do you think there's going to be some consolidation soon, or there's lots of, uh, or is this, this is going to be sort of flooded for a long time yet, and, and people just need to discern for themselves which is quality and which is. Yeah, you know, crap. I, yeah, no, I, I think, I mean, it's, it's, you know, clearly there's, a, it's a big market there today. It's become uh, something that people are familiar with, they're comfortable yeah. with, um, and clearly within any market, there's, uh, there's, there's good stuff and there's uh, less good stuff. Yeah. There is going to be some consolidation. We definitely believe that there are brands like our own which are offering, um, you know, premium experiences, and not just the sound. You know, premium experiences is. Um, well, you design, can buy a product, design, yeah. water res waterproofness, yeah. life proofness, the fact that you can update it, the fact that new features come along, the fact that it doesn't become obsolete and get replaced by uh, some new version that you then feel obliged to buy. Yeah. So I think that's where we're coming from. There's clearly, you know, going to be a lot of choices out there for the consumer, um, and one of the challenges the consumer will have is just the the confusion that may exist in any marketplace where there's a lot of choices. Sure. So. Um, it, it will consolidate in the next few years. You know, it'll yeah. be an interesting market to watch in the next few years. But uh, it's an exciting market as well because it allows people to take their music into places they haven't taken their music. Before. And I mean, I can see the the evolution in the speakers. You know, it's come a long way. I mean, just, even just from yep. the design point of view. We've, and it'll be fascinating to see how it's going to evolve over the next few years. Yeah, absolutely. We're, yep. we're we're watching this movie live along yep. with everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> So um, now I crazily forgot to bring. I've got a Ghost Fero Ollie robot. It looks a little bit like the the Mega Boom, except it's got a sort of a couple of tank track wheels on either side. And I wanted to bring it because my question was: Are you have you ever thought of marrying the UE Mega Boom with the Ghost Fero Ollie robot, so you can have a, a remote controlled robot speaker? So I have to confess that until until uh, you posed the question, we had, we had never thought of it before. But now that you've asked the question, certainly something we can think of. Uh, as we said, we have the remote on-off feature. That's so if, if you have yeah. your speaker rolling around, it's got the room, batteries in there. Well, you need some yep. wheels. Yep, <laughs> it, absolutely. Yeah. So who knows, right? So uh, never say never in life. Never say, so, oh, that, would, yep. that would be a real evolution that in, would, the, in that, the speaker industry. That would definitely be something different and something nobody has done before. Well, talk to the talk, maybe there could be you know some special deal between the special edition between the uh, Ghost Fero. Yep. You know, you have that ball, yep. that, the, which is for sale in Apple stores, and so I mean, it, you know, it's caught Apple's attention. So yep. maybe that maybe you guys could do something. Logitech's caught Apple's attention too. So, so uh, I don't know. That's just a crazy idea. I always like to come up with crazy ideas. It's a, it's a good way to be. Um, and um, you know, how how do you think Bluetooth technology will be improved next? We've we've got Bluetooth for low energy. We've yep. got you know various Bluetooth codecs, aptX, which the iPhone doesn't support, but which uh, that, that I'm aware of, but which Android supports. I mean, what can you tell us that you know is coming next? And what is the future for the portable speaker industry beyond becoming uh, roboticized with uh, you know robot yeah. wheels? Well, so so yeah, I, th I think the in a nutshell. Yeah, in, in a nutshell. I mean, so what we're about is uh, you know the, the product we uh, and the reason we have this ability to update is because we always want to bring 
new things that are meaningful to our consumers. Mm -hmm. And so we brought various updates over the last year to UE Boom. We're bringing an update this week, this coming week. Uh, whereas that with the update you enable Boom to Mega Boom pairing. Yeah. Um, you enable the remote on off and, and you also enable the wireless updating in the future as well. Yeah. Now one of the things we've shown uh, recently is uh, a feature where I'll, I'll bring up and show this, uh, I'll advertise for some California beer company at the same time. And uh, one of the features we've, we've just recently been talking about is when we brought out UE Boom we were able to pair two together. And one of the things we want to do is we know there's a lot of people out there who own UE. Just point it towards us a little bit so we can see that there's six notes, the, 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 yep. the, the top of it. All right. So we can see, yeah, we can see yep. six UE Boom speakers. Six there. UE Boom speakers. Yeah. And so what we uh, wanted to do, and I'm going to lay it down here now, just uh, the sound will do better justice than the words at this point in time. Sure. What we always want to do is, is uh, keep rewarding our consumers for being our consumers. So bring them more added value features over time. You know, our belief is we're not we're not there as um, we're not there as a as a um, creating an infrastructure. We're there really for more for these ad hoc moments. So mm -hmm. you may have a couple of booms, Alex. I may have a couple. Uh, anybody else around us may have a, a couple of speakers. And if we get together for an evening, being able to put all those things together could really create a better moment than just uh, no having one, one speaker on yeah. its own. If we have those speakers, so let's go so back. Everything's supposed to be connected. It's this whole internet of connected things yep yeah yep. that's what you're doing yeah so what we're going to do here is we'll we'll have ue boom playing music as it does uh, exceptionally and then and now all six are playing so people get ready for the train to join you can definitely hear it's uh yeah so i'll go back go back to one yep yeah. So to the now, obviously, we could spread these around the room. Sure. Um, your video wouldn't pick that up, but um, I think you can get the feeling of uh, of what we're doing there. So, so again, our, our goal as we do that is let me just turn it up. Yeah. yeah. Turn it, up. It, it refuses to go, but it, it will now. It's doing it. Now. It likes Curtis Mayfield that much <laughs> that it wants to keep going. So, so uh, you know, our, our goal is to keep bringing meaningful features, but bringing them back to the install base as well, and. Uh, creating that opportunity for people Not to get... Not just meaningful features, but meaningful experiences. Meaningful, yeah, really meaningful experiences. Uh, it's the right word, you're exactly right. It's the word I should have used. It, it's, uh, and, and I said rewarding people and not giving people the feeling that what they bought last year is out of date. Mm. It's being life-proof, meaning you can withstand the knocks, the bumps, the tumbles, the splashes, but you have to be future-proof from a technology point of view as well, otherwise it doesn't make sense. So sure. I don't know I can just find the answer to this question by doing a Google search, but are they already working on Bluetooth 5.0? We've gone from... You know, two to we're up to version four now. Yeah, well, you know, the, and that won't appear yeah. in phones for a year or two at least, yeah. presumably. But. Yeah, I mean, there's always uh, things going on in the in the in the space of evolution. You know, the low energy stuff you talked about is uh, is really really important, and that's going to uh, impact all the sensors and the, the sort of wearable things that uh, uh, you hear a lot of talk of today. Mm, absolutely. Uh, you'll have Bluetooth as as it exists today as a as a good way for people to. Uh, to play audio and, and the integration of all those things will start coming in the next couple of years. Has Ultimate Ears done any work to help improve Bluetooth or are you really or are you more focusing on the actual audio side of things because the other guys whoever works on Bluetooth has really got that under control? No, I think you know I think we, we uh, you know so one of the things you're always working on in the context of how it translates then to our consumers is the battery life and the amount of hours you can get out of uh, a product using Bluetooth. So any any way you can be more efficient in that respect, you can improve battery life. We've worked a lot in terms of the range yeah. and the wireless range you can get. And so with, uh, with UE Mega Boom, uh, we went for a class one Bluetooth device. And by going class one, it allows you to increase the range. We optimized the antennas, the uh, inside as well to, uh, to improve the wireless range. So, so within the context of what we're doing, we're always looking to take what is a standard and optimize the standard within the context of what we're doing to create the best possible experience as well. And so, um, any final messages for IT Wire uh, readers and watchers, and also for your current and potential customers? Yeah, well, I, you know, I think it's our, the the message always from us is, uh, you know, we, we really believe in in the experience that we're we're trying to bring. And as I said, the you know, launching UE Mega Boom is a great event for us. It's a great moment where we've pushed the envelope on certain things, but pushing the update to the UE boom as well is as important mm. and uh, we really don't want as I said it's really important for us to feel that we did it we designed a product to last and be durable but we designed it as well to last from a technology point of view as well 
uh, bringing that update is uh, as important as bringing the new product. And um, we're always looking for people's feedback and getting people's feedback on how they like the product, what they'd like to see us do in the future. And uh, because we have this updatable platform, we're all ears. That's Ultimate ears and all ears. That's a great way to end it. And, and hopefully you'll be all robot track, uh, you know, robot tracks too. And we <laughs> just had a really good input and feedback this morning of a new feature we should definitely uh, pursue. So. Well, even if it's just a, a prototype, it'd be fun. Thank you, Rory. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for the time this morning.